Ladies and gentlemen, Midsummer Scream, and we got yourselves a special one for you. Gentlemen, please introduce yourselves and what you guys are here promoting because I think it's an amazing thing. Hey everyone, I'm Joe Filipponi. I'm Daryl. I'm the writer and director of Blood Red Riverbed. I'm Nathaniel John. I am the star of the movie. So now I'm hearing that uh, I, I talked to talked to you yesterday, yeah. and you you informed me about the movie. You said it was a great blend of uh, a good mixture of American Pie meets Friday the Thirteenth. Can you guys touch a little bit about on that? Because that has me very curious. Yeah, of course. So the film is very much um, that run-of-the-mill slasher vibe and everything. We wanted to capture the classic, like uh, shot on video '80s film uh, kind of style and everything. But we got that element and mixed it very much with just a party kind of film. And the entire film just followed these characters as they're getting ready for this party. And so once they get to this party, um, you know, typical slasher tropes start to happen, people separating, and uh, it becomes a bloodbath for sure. Yeah. I and mean, I think those are always the best horror movies, right? Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, that's what keeps me wanting to go. I'm like, who's going to die next? Yeah. That's always the question in horror movies, right? And being the, the old man of the cast, because I think I'm the oldest one who was in the movie, of course, you know, I'm the crazy old one, you know, you young whippersnappers are all going to die, you got to get away from here, but. Do the teenagers listen to me? No, of course not. I, mean, I think every horror movie we see, the teenagers never listen. They like to always do the opposite of what they're right. supposed to do, right? And it's been so cool like being able to kind of be like that crazy Ralph type of character in a, right. in a movie. Because I normally play, in the, the horror films that I've done, I normally play like either like the creep or like the, the weird like kind of nerdy guy or whatever. Or I'm like, you know, naked having sex and then dying. So this was kind of cool to like play a character that's out of out of that. <laughs> now, talk to me a little bit about more of that because um, I've had the opportunity in high school, I was in theater, so like I know how it is to, to prep for like a big thing. What was it like? You said that was something new for you. What was the preparation and the prep time for that to go into that? Uh, yeah, so I think I got the script from you like in May or June, maybe July. It was July. Yeah, I had July. a couple months to prep because I didn't fly out to Oklahoma until September, so I just kind of read the script as much as I can, you know, as, as an actor, and my way of working is I don't really make choices, I never go into anything that I do being like, oh, I'm going to say this line that way, or uh, on this line I'm going to like cry or get angry. I just, I knew my lines inside and out, I made a little backstory for my character, I knew my character, um, so that that way, when I was working with the other actors, I could just totally be in the moment and right. go on my instincts. I'm going back. Um, so that was just kind of what I did. I did kind of rewatch the the first two Friday Thirteenth to, to see Walt's performance in, in Crazy Ralph, just to kind of get that uh, inspiration. Right. <laughs> but I, w I was more excited just about going to, to Oklahoma because I love traveling for work and I love traveling doing uh, movies and stuff so and being on the Cherokee Reservation I, I love native anything I love native art native culture so that it's was more beautiful stuff right yeah now, really and is. I mean the the most exciting thing for me was going to the Cherokee Museum and just seeing like all that history right 100% now uh, talk to me about the inspiration. How did this movie come about? What, 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 what was some of your like biggest inspirations coming in? And then what did it finally take to put it on to pen and paper? Um, so the biggest inspirations for the film, uh, I've always grown up loving horror films just my entire life. Um, and I've always kind of wanted to make my own movies. Uh, my mom, she got me into it and everything as like three or four years old, like nonstop just watching horror movies. And um, like here, or not here, sorry, um, in Oklahoma, um, over there and everything, um, you know, like, we don't have many, like, uh, films or anything made in the area, but, like, what we do have is, like, just big, like, open spaces, like, forests and, like, hills and just beautiful scenery and stuff. And I always call it, like, an untapped, like, resource, you know, because, like, right. nobody's, like, making movies in, like, a perfect setting. Right. And, um, yeah, so, like, with that, I was kind of just thinking of, like, ideas and stuff, and, um, I went out one day with friends to party out at the river and that night I had like a drunken nightmare um, about getting killed by this killer like who had a cowboy hat and a skull face and uh, so the next day I just started writing like just the ideas that I got from that and it was originally just going to be like a short trailer just kind of concept kind of thing but um <laughs> Did we test that already? Yo. Did we test that already? 
Okay. okay. Oh, here we go. But um, yeah, so I had this nightmare that kind of inspired me to write, and um, yeah, whenever I did decide to actually make it, I went to a convention. Um, Texas Frightmare Weekend. Oh, I've heard and, good things about that one. Yeah, uh, and I got to meet John Carpenter, and uh, getting to meet him there, it just kind of like awakened that kind of uh, drive in me to, you know, really just get it done. And, and what a good inspiration, man! Oh, John Carpenter has made some yeah. of the best films out there. Yeah, from, the most yeah, iconic. The Thing, to Halloween, to you know, They Live, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, dude, so much inspiration as far as those guys go. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think a lot of these directors would be here if they weren't for those guys. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Now, what was the biggest challenge for, and anyone can ask me, what was the biggest challenge that came, you guys came across uh, making the film? Uh, do you want to just go down the line? Um, you guys probably each have an individual. Yeah, let's yeah. go down the line. What was the biggest challenge for y'all guys to, to, to shoot the film? And everything? I don't really think I had a, a challenge. I mean, I was a little nervous going into it because I knew that this was the first movie that they have done and I've right. been doing this for a long time so I wasn't sure how that was gonna go working with a lot of people where this it, even like the actors where it was a lot of their first times being on a set so it, it as and, and not to, to try to be like oh big shot or, or backhanded thing or whatever but I think as a lot of a lot of actors who are more seasoned or have done this for a long time when we go on to a set where it's a lot of more like amateur or new people you never know how it's gonna be if it's gonna be a professional set if it's gonna be people who know what they're doing if even the film's gonna turn out good right. um, so I had a little bit of that kind of nervousness and I didn't know Daryl or anyone, we were just Facebook friends, and he had posted about this, and I thought it sounded interesting, so I reached out to him, and then he he offered me the the role. Um, but the first day on set, like I was like, oh my god, like the way that they're doing this, this is it, it was one of the most professional sets that I've been on. Um, so I knew like I was gonna make something that I was proud of. I knew that I was gonna work with people who were doing something that they were passionate about. Uh, and then working with the other actors, um, it, it was the same thing. It was like people who were just very passionate about what they were doing, people who love movies, love horror. Right. So I was like, oh yeah, like I've been bugging Daryl to like be in, in more of his stuff. I'm like, please, please, please bring me out again. I want to work with you guys There you again. go. Yeah. There yeah. you go. And as for you, as far as the filmmaker, and, and this is your this is your baby right here, you know, what was the biggest struggle bringing it to life uh -huh. and, and actually the production part of it? What was yeah. the biggest challenges? It, that's honestly the biggest challenge is bringing it to life. Right. Uh, you know, getting the people there every day that we needed to film. Uh, right, you know, getting a schedule together, um, getting that final script together, um, all that stuff in the marketing, trying to push and get the word out. Because we had a few, there's, you know, it's a party movie, so there's a bunch of extras and stuff, so getting people to be there for that. And, right. You know, I had to like book bands to be there to perform and stuff at the party. And um, it's just really a lot of the, I guess the detail stuff, you know, the behind the scenes, like tiny work. That's, right. like I love it for sure, because it's definitely satisfactory, you know, being able to be there on set and seeing all all this come together yeah. that's my favorite part it was like like he had to help me a few times because I would get emotional you know on set just like seeing my dreams come to life you know exactly. seeing what I wrote and put on paper like seeing that actually happen yeah. and like even just dressing like the killer the first time like that was such an insane it's a rewarding feeling it, it really is yeah. like it's from now it's from the paper to real life now you know what I mean and it's just like now you're a step closer to getting this done it's like yeah. very rewarding for sure yeah the what about struggle. you what was the biggest struggle for you on set that you honestly were to um, same thing, you know, dealing with a, a bunch of people not really wanting to be coordinated, come together and really deal with the schedule. A lot of the actors were immature, amateur, and in any word you want to use, really. Uh, <laughs> a lot of, it, yeah, a lot of doubt. Nobody really wanted to be there because they felt like it wasn't going to be anything other than just something that we were going to put on our TV or like a YouTube channel or something right. like that. They never really thought it would make it to a physical copy or anything else other than that. So it was really difficult getting like everybody's encouragement and everything like that. Well, listen, now you guys Can are Can I just piggyback yeah. off of... Off of 
that just this really does have a testament to Daryl and just like his drive and and making things happen and not just being on talk. This was shot less than a year ago. Like when I say like I flew out there in September, like it was last September. When I say I got the script in July, it was last July. So now already not even a year later, he's been going to all these cons, going to all these film festivals. He's got a, a physical copy of it. He's getting it out there outside of just friends and family in Oklahoma. Like, I know people here in LA that of uh, stuff that, you know, I shot three, four years ago where it's still like, oh, I've got a meeting with a big producer who's going to get it out there. I've got, I'm, I'm working on getting it to Netflix. I'm working on getting it to streaming. And it's like, okay, get, stop with the working on the this crew and they went to quit. Tarantino route where they were just like we're gonna do what we want and we're gonna release what we want yeah no one's gonna stop and I love that passion especially as filmmakers because like me myself that's been my dream is to be a filmmaker and so I look at people like Quentin Tarantino like Chris Fermel like all these people and everything and that passion for them to want to make a film no matter what it is what story they want to tell yeah. they're gonna make their film do it dude you just, know what I just mean? make make yeah. your film just get it out there because it's it like trust me all you guys like watching this like these two guys are gonna be big like they're gonna be huge and probably a year or two we're gonna look we're gonna we're gonna look down the road and i'm gonna be like man these guys blowing up down there in hall h of san diego comic-con now yeah man. <laughs> there we go um so for anyone that is interested in, in wanting to watch the film or, or get it where can they find the film at where can they purchase the film so they can watch it so currently um, our distribution is through Colt and Classic Films. Um, they have a website, coltandclassicfilms.com. You can also find them on Etsy as well. But we are on all social media platforms, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you can find us at Strict Nine Films. That is our production company itself. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got like uh, my own like social media pages and everything. Um, yeah, that's really where we're doing all of the work, is just the social media. And I would have to say, uh, hopefully you guys had a really fun and great Midsummer Screen weekend, but I'm gonna leave you it's on been one. amazing. I'm gonna leave you on probably the hardest question of this interview that we always do here on the Nights of Horror, and that is, Whatever, whatever world we, way we want to go down, what is your favorite scary movie? That's going to be your hardest question of the whole interview right now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite scary... And there's so many sub-genres, there's, the, there's a lot out yeah. there. Yeah. A lot. Um, mine usually changes, but right now, my favorite scary movie is probably Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS. Okay. Just because I love Diane Thorne and I follow her advice on, on actors. What she used to say is an actor acts and when they get the opportunity, act. Because you never know. Like, And that's been the story of my career. That's been the story of me being in this movie. An actor acts. I reached out. I got the opportunity. I said yes. Um, for me, uh, I always go back to The Exorcist because that's Classic. what like it scared me first as a kid and everything. But like growing up and everything, now my official favorite would be Demons. Demons. Wow. Okay. I'm hearing some deep cut answers that we don't normally hear, and I love it. <laughs> we always get all the mainstream like Halloween thing. I'm like, these are some deep cut answers, and I love them. That's that. Uh, you guys are fans. What about yourself? What's your favorite horror film? Right here. I mean, growing up, my favorite movie was, uh, of course, Basic Classroom, Spain, of course. Um, growing up, I think uh, I fell in love more with, like, honestly, Pet Cemetery. It really, really creeped me out as a kid, honestly, watching Gage slice, like, the Achilles and everything. Like, Seeing Zelda. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I still have nightmares Crazy. about that. Yeah. Yeah. But well, definitely yeah. a great one. Hey, Cemetery is, is amazing. I don't know about the remake, but you no. know, <laughs> the original is where yeah. it's at. Well, I want to thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. And, thank you. And I hope you guys had a wonderful Midsummer Screen yes. Weekend, and I hope we get to see you back in the future, to be honest with you. Definitely. I can't wait to get my hands on this. I can't wait to watch it. And uh, we will definitely be talking about it on our show in the future. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys so much. much. Thank you.